Thanks a lot, Mr. Dadmas. Um, thank you very much. I suspect this is probably the last time I shall be speaking here, and I want to take the opportunity of thanking everybody who have uh, listened which, with, with such uh, courtesy. I would, uh, I'd like to thank the chairman, and I'd also like to thank his predecessor, Professor Marrera, who perhaps some of us will also remember. I remember him very fondly. Now, um, the, what, what we've just had is a very clear exposition of the basic facts of foreign direct investment in the, U in the EU economy. And I thought the most telling statistic was the one, was just about the final one, when he said that 17% of people employed in the 28, there's now still 28 member states, 28 member states work for foreign owned companies, which is so it's therefore absolutely huge. Now what, what wasn't covered, which I'd like to, which I'd like to ask about, and this is really what my question is, and I'll be very brief. There's a statement here from a Commission press release which says, while the EU remains open for inward foreign direct investment, this needs to be vetted to limit any possible danger to the EU's strategic interests. It goes on to say, the new regulation protects critical infrastructure such as energy, transport, communications, data, space and finance and technologies, including semiconductors. Um, and then there's a quote here, Europe that protects has become a reality. This is from Frank Proust, I know he's not in the Commission, but he's still an influential uh, member of the European Parliament who, who very often speaks for the Commission or speaks... in. Um, in line with the Commission. Now, at the moment, foreign direct until very recently, foreign direct investment was, was vetted on a national basis. So, for example, France took a, took a very different view from that of the UK. France said there are a number of strategic sectors uh, in which foreign, foreign companies cannot make acquisitions in. One of them was food. So Danone is a, is a, as far as the French are concerned, is a, is a strategic imperative. All that yogurt is very, very important strategically. On the other hand, in the UK, and I'm not casting a value judgment now, on the other hand, in the UK, we have a pretty much open economy for foreign direct investment. Uh, you know, including I pay my electricity bills in the southwest of England to uh, EDF. Which, I, which is, of course, Electricity de France, not to be confused with the EFD, which is the political group which I've been a member of for such a long time. So to come to my question, which is a very simple question, you've given a very clear ex exposition. The context is that the Commission has very considerable powers to monitor, and pre uh, to, not just to monitor, but to actually to influence and to, and to prevent foreign direct investment. And therefore, what is the Commission's plans, insofar as you're able to tell us, to ac actually use those powers on the basis of the very clear information and exposition which you've given us, and which may I presume to congratulate you. I, I, I mentioned a little bit that the purpose of the foreign direct investment screening, I think there were several questions about the foreign direct, in direct investment uh, screening framework that we've just uh, set up and it's uh, in force. The purpose is clearly not to look at the speculative nature or not of the investment. We're still talking about foreign direct investments, which is long term, which involves control, and it's very difficult to have a speculative foreign direct investment. But the purpose, again, is to look at the security risks that it, it could uh, imply in the European Union, which leads me to the, the question uh, about uh, whether the, the, the quote uh, on uh, l'Europe qui protège uh, and whether this means uh, a change in attitude or whether we will replace uh, EU uh, member states' authorities. No, uh, as we said it many times, the framework guarantees a framework that ensures certain procedural uh, requirements are met in all the national uh, screening mechanisms and that we cooperate so we know what is going on. And the Commission, as you know, will be able to issue opinions, which include pro possibly recommendations as well, mitigating measures. And it's not a question of vetting and having a veto power on foreign direct investment. It's, it's not foreseen. Uh, but rather to, to work in order to identify, first of all, the risks, the security risks, and, uh, and possibly to 
uh, recommend mitigating measures in areas where the Commission can actually do so. So I don't, I don't expect you, you ask um, what are the Commission's plans. The Commission doesn't have plans to pursue any particular policy in this field. We want to be able to do something that has never been done before in Europe, which is to know who is investing uh, and to share this, uh, this information in order to identify the risk, because today this doesn't happen. It happens in some member states individually, but there's no communication uh, between us or between uh, other member states that might be affected from a security point of view by investors in a neighboring member state. This is today not possible, and through the FDI regulation, we will be able to identify, first of all, those risks and to see what possible uh, mitigating measures there will be.